A lot of new info dropping this morning about what's going on over at Disney. I told you there was going to be a lot of information that comes out over the next couple of weeks because a lot of people are about to get the old boot. So naturally, a lot of people with information are going to come out and share it and talk about it. So I'm going to talk about it. A lot of stuff happened over the past 24 hours. A lot of people have left. A lot of people are running their mouths. I mean, it's kind of the same story with Disney, a company in shambles. No idea what anybody else is doing there. It's it's a mess, which they need to get corrected. So Disney layoff rounds likely starting before annual meeting. Details on cuts emerge. So this is being described as a bloodbath. I talked about this yesterday. It's kind of a big thing. A lot of people are getting cut, and these aren't people that run the pop stand at the park. We're talking about big wigs, people making a lot of money, a lot of money, a lot of useless positions, a lot of nasty people like Victoria Alonzo. There's some details on her that I'm going to go over today because it's been confirmed that she was fired. A lot of my guessing and speculating in my previous video on why she got fired, somewhat confirmed too, by the way, from this, and I want to go over it. I would imagine there'll be more details on why she was fired as well, but they're finally starting to leak out. So exclusive from deadline, with April 3rd's, shareholder meeting approaching a virtual fair this year, less than two weeks away. Some clarity is emerging about the company's plan to reduce staff and cost cuts. Insiders tell deadline that multiple rounds of cuts are being prepared. The first one is being targeted for late March, likely next week. That would be right before April. So yeah, I I think that that's right. Uh, March 30th or 31st have been floated as possible dates, but that has not been confirmed. According to sources, there will be a big wave in late April described as the big one or a bloodbath when a large portion of the cuts are expected to come. Now, what's funny, March 31st, if those layoffs go down, uh, that's going to be during a big comic-con c2e2 which is of course 31st through i think april 2nd and marvel they will be in full attendance to that event as they usually always are so it'll be interesting if some big layoffs get hit and then you know they still have to do their their little panels so i wonder I wonder if any uh, questions will be brought up then because they do usually take questions. That'll be an interesting, it'll be an interesting date. According to our sources, like I said, a bloodbath is coming. Information varies on a potential third round of layoffs. Some say it might come the one that might come between the one in late March and the one in late April, while others note that it could follow the one in late April if deemed necessary. Disney declined to comment. Senior Disney executives have been hashing out specifics on the reductions in recent weeks. We hear that most managers already have submitted their layoff target reports. The step the step corporations take before a major workforce calling. CEO Bob Iger revealed the scope of the cuts during the company's February 8th quarterly earnings call with Wall Street analysts. Plans to let go of 7,000 staffers, roughly 3% of the company's global workforce are not being taken lightly. Iger said the pairing down of employee roles is a cornerstone of the effort to reach $5.5 billion in overall cost savings. That's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, A lot of people are going to be gone in the bloodbath. The bloodbath. I love that they're calling it that. (laughs) I find it hilarious. Most of these people are worthless or problems. How much of the woke rot will be purged here? This is, uh, what's interesting about this is, this is, you know, you've got Victoria Alonzo out, right? 
she was rot at Marvel for sure. A super woke, very, very woke and outspoken about being woke and how Marvel needs to change its direction and it needs to get with the times. And she would pull a lot of like weird bullshit moments on red carpets, especially like when she said his name is Namor. When she's talking about Namor. Who's still not in the MCU as far as I'm concerned. It's that weird fake version. Namor. Uh, yeah, talked about this, like her virtue signaling that she did constantly. Like this little piece right here. The veteran Marvel Studios executive and producer of the nominated film Argentina was stopped on the red carpet posing for photographers assigned to capture top executives on Hollywood's big night. But something shocked her. Look at this. Two women, Alonzo said to the female photographers hired for this gig. As in most corners of Hollywood, women are outnumbered by men in the photo line. Emotional. Alonzo insisted the pair put down their cameras and pose for a photo with her in front of a giant Oscar statuette. As they all smiled, she told them, we've worked so hard to get here and we're not going anywhere. Eight days later, she was fired. <laughs> Oops. Oops. And uh, the term here used by variety is fired. I told you she didn't just walk away. Now, she was likely given a severance package because people of her status usually get one. Uh, but it also comes with an NDA. So I would imagine she won't be coming out and blasting Disney anytime soon. Now, they're saying the cause of her termination is unclear. She was also blindsided by this. She had no idea what's coming. Uh, they put that in here, too. She was blindsided. The sources said she. it's not clear why she's fired. The decision was made by a consortium, including Human Resources, Disney's legal department, multiple executives, including Disney Entertainment, co-chairman Alan Bergman, to whom all of Marvel Studios reports, Alonzo's longtime boss and Marvel chief creative officer Kevin Feige, and uh, it notes here that he was put in an impossible situation and didn't intervene. This is according to one of their sources. Uh, he stayed out of it. And this is the best part here. Alonzo was blindsided, another insider added, because why would they get rid of such a quoted po powerful women in Hollywood? Quoted as one of the most powerful women in Hollywood. In fact, in the top 100, usually. Look at how many people had to co-sign on firing her, though. I want to point that out. A shitload of people got together and said, she's got to go. That's what's funny about this. Kevin Feige did nothing. Because don't forget, Kevin Feige's woke as hell. He's super woke. He's next. He'll be gone by the end of Phase 5. That's my prediction. Unless he turns it around and dumps a lot of this woke bullshit that he's chasing, he's gone after Phase 5. That's my prediction. Bringing all these Rick and Morty writers in and late show hosts and shit to fucking work on, on Marvel. Are you kidding me? He's gone after Phase 5 because... I promise you, this this bleeding that the MCU is doing ain't going to stop anytime soon. But look at how many people it took to fire her ass. A lot. You had to get human resources involved. You had to get the legal department involved. You had to get a top CEO involved. Alan Bergman had to sit down with all these people. How the hell did we get her ass out of here? These people, once they're in, they're hard to get rid of. Because they will wield the media to no end to smear the shit out of you to make you look like a piece of trash. A bigoted, sexist piece of trash. That's what they're going to try to label you as. Now, they're not going to be able to do it for her because, or she's not going to be able to do it to them because she likely signed an NDA. But imagine if she didn't, if she had just walked away. Like, you have to, she probably got a Big ass paycheck too. I guarantee you, big big money was given to her. But uh, this is all interesting to me. 
Feige wanted to keep his job, so he said nothing. But he was co-signing all the shit that she was putting in his desk. The reason that the uh, the FX, they try to defend her in here and say that that's nonsense. I don't think so. There are enough reports that she is a, a bully that I believe it. Plus, she's woke as hell. Woke as hell people are usually evil, nasty people. So telling me that she's doing all this king-making shit, I believe it. But she was one of the wokest, very, very woke, and outspoken about it. Kind of like the rest of Disney. There's more shit going around, too. I saw this yesterday. Uh, Here's how to kill a a series in 20 seconds. X-Men 97 executive producer DeMeo reveals series story informed by his experience as a black gay man the hell does that have to do with x-men you know he had some goodwill when he was talking about the witcher and what was going on in that writer's room and and all that shit you know all you had to do was go and make the show be quiet (laughs) just make a good product coming out and doing this stuff because who knows he could just be saying a lot of this shit is lip service sometimes and it's like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, oh, it was a woke thing, and the, and the media will eat it up. But you also piss off fans, and it's just not a good thing to do. So now I went from slightly optimistic about this series now, which I guess is my fault. I shouldn't have got optimistic about it, to now disregarding it. I don't even know if I'm going to watch it now because it's like, really? How does this inform the show at all? you got more firings at Lucasfilm. That guy, Damian Lindelof, left, thank God. That guy's a hack, but uh, the movie is still going forward. The reason I even bring this up is because this is yet another person fired from Lucasfilm. Kathleen Kennedy has fired more people than she's actually worked with. And then Marvel Comics is not doing any better. Look at this garbage art. You see the gar- Look at Jean Grey and how awful she looks up there. And then these people have no detail in their faces. This looks like shit. And apparently... I haven't read this, but according to Opinion Nerded, uh, this is the selection of five people to save the world. Now, uh, if, uh, no, four people that could save the world in 10 minutes or less. Uh, I believe if you were going to try to do that, you would call Reed Richards, Bruce Banner, Tony Stark, and T'Challa. But no, these are the people that modern Marvel calls to save the world. <laughs> Marvel Comics is trash. Trash. Anyway, I, Disney is fun to watch right now. There is so much stuff going on. So we will stay informed, and I will let you know what's going on. Anyway, that's it. Let me know what you guys think. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Check out my Rumble and Locals, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my Locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube, they'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.